That's it, we're done for the day. Have a yeah. good 80s day. It was a great show, okay. from California. Well, I wrote it down somewhere. There it is. Right next to the picture of Cher with a mouthful of beets. Ah, uh, good. He's on his way, man. You ever eat a bee, Mr. Pitts? I ate a grasshopper once. Do you think that's why I'm so immature? Sounds logical to me. <laughs> Betty Jacobs bet me I couldn't eat that sucker. She bet me a dollar, so I just popped it in my mouth and gulped it down. Stayed sick as a dog for two days. I still can't look at a grasshopper without getting queasy. Hey, Queenie. It's me. Right. That Blake Stanford is coming down from California. I'm going to go meet him at the airport in a minute. Uh-huh. All right. I will. Yeah, make sure Bob, Bob has his room cleaned up. Tell him to put those snake skins in the garage or somewhere. They should give me plenty of time. Okay, bye, hon. Ah, things are looking up, Jody. Can I go now, Mr. Pitts? What's well, the big hurry? I want to take Pepper out for a ride before it gets too hot. 
And I'm supposed to get my hair done up at 1 o'clock because Mama's taking me and Betty over to the Pizza Hut in Chandlerville, and I think I got a crush on one of the waiters over there. <clears throat> then we're going to go see Death Screams at the drive-in while Mama goes to play canasta with Mrs. Foote. Death Screams, Joey? Yes, sir. Good movie. Everybody gets killed. One with the axe, one with the knife, one with the pitchfork, one with the chainsaw, and one with the trash compactor. It's a love story. <laughs> I'm back. Hey, Averna. That, uh, Mr. Stanford is coming down from California. I'll go over to the airport to meet him in a minute. All I'm saying is to come down and help out the store while I'm gone. That'll be just fine. You know, I sure hope the Stanford fella can help us out. Well, he's supposed to be good. Just we'll just have to wait and see. I'm going, Mama. Can I go? Harley, are you in here? Hey, Donna, what can I do for you? I need a couple of salt licks. Morning, Verna. Jody. Morning, Garner. You, uh, need any help loading them, Garner? No, I already got them loaded. Just thought it might be honorable to tell you about it before I left. Put it on my cab, will you? Will do. You ever find that uh, missing head of cattle, Garner? No, uh, not yet. It's gonna do me some cruising with the sheriff this evening. Maybe they'll turn up. I hate to think we got a wrestling problem. Well, it wouldn't be the first time. Hey, you going by my house, Mr. Fine? Well, I reckon I am, Joni. You need a ride? If you don't mind. No, I don't mind at all. Go ahead and jump in the truck. Thanks. See y'all later. You be careful on that horse there, Joni. I will, I will. Hey, Gunner. I'm going to pick up that ad agency guy in a little while. You going to bake that some meetings tomorrow? I already told you how I feel about that, Miss Arlen. You remember the community, Ghana. Don't you at least want to put your two cents in? That's a waste of time, Arlen, and a waste of money, too. I'm sorry you feel that way. Yeah, well, I do. Well, I better get going. I got a heap of work to get done today. Adios. Bye, Garner. Hard-headed. If he wasn't, that ranch of his would have folded up long ago. Rancher in these parts has to be hard head. Mayor's office. Just a minute, Tiny. Are you in this tiny temple? Just what I need. I guess I'm in. Hello, Tiny. Yeah, he be staying over at our house, so I know. Of course, he'd be taking a shower, Tiny. Is something wrong with that? <laughs> it's not like I'm going to let him run around the house naked, Tiny, for God's sake. <laughs> How, Uncle Taps? Is he serious? Look, Tiny, you don't have to worry about Bethesda. She's not going to fall for any big city dude. He's going to be here on business, Tiny, not pleasure. Look, he's probably gonna be a short, fat, bald guy with thick glasses anyway. Right, you got nothing to worry about. What if he looks like Ben Affleck? Look, Tiny, I got a lot of things to do today. Okay, okay, you can come over for dinner tonight, Tiny. I gotta go. I think Tiny has been reading too many of them movie magazines. Oh, he's just crazy about Bethesda is all. You know how young love is. I've got more important things to worry about. If Mr. Blake Stanford of Tienenstein and Stanford doesn't come up with something fast and flashy, Latigo is going to drop right off the map. Won't be nothing left but a greasy spot on the road in memories. I'm sure it'd help if we had more to offer than tarantulas and dust storms. That tarantula festival was one of our biggest flops. <laughs> And Rattlesnake Roundup was a duck, too. As well as the chili cook-off. Cow chip chucking contest. <laughs> Stagecoach days. The Doom Buggy Scorpion Classic. <laughs> and the Greater West Texas Frisbee toss -off. And how many people showed for that anyway? Four. Five if you count the hippies full of frisbees. <laughs> Still curious me to think about that. I try not to think about it. Morning, morning, morning. Why, oh, Bethesda, don't you look nice? Why, well, thank you, Verna. What's with the uh, get up, Bethesda? It's not what you're thinking. If you're thinking what I think you're thinking, it's not that at all. 
I've just been over in Chandlerville running through my routine for the Lions Club loons. Thought maybe I'd come up here and get some constructive criticism from Verna. Verna is going to be busy today, Bethesda. We're all going to be busy. Can't this wait? Daddy, if you knew anything at all about the performing arts, you know that practice is everything. Aside from Lottie Bender, I will be the only one representing Lago at the loonies. Our reputation is at stake. Is that Lottie going to be shearing a sheep again this year? While reciting the charge of the light brigade, same old thing. Makes me want to gag every time I see that mess. You know, I told her flat out that I was going before her this year. Last year, I went on after her. I had so much wool sticking to me, I looked like a Q-tip. <laughs> Ruined the whole thing. Now, this won't take but a couple of minutes. I'm sure Verna has a couple of minutes to spare to watch me practice. That's up to Verna. I gotta get down to the airport. You mean you're not gonna watch me? I'm running late, sugar. Well, maybe I can show you tonight. Maybe I can show that man from Hollywood, too. Bethesda! That man is coming to save Ladigo, Texas. Not so you can perform. Is that understood? Is it? Well, I guess so. But it doesn't seem fair. Right, well, I better get going. I'll be back around then. Whatever you say, Daddy. And no performing for Mr. Sanford. Promise? Promise. <laughs> Good. I'll see you two later. Have a nice trip, Barlin. Well, Bethesda, you had your fingers crossed. You bet. Daddy can't expect me to pass up an opportunity like this. It may never come again. Besides, I wonder what this Mr. Sanford looks like. He's got a dreamy voice. I bet he's a real hunk. <laughs> I already told Mama that I'm sitting next to him at dinner tonight. Tiny called this morning. And I think your daddy invited him over to dinner, too. Ew, I could just puke! <sighs> what did daddy have to go and do a thing like that for? How could he? I'm thinking Tiny put a little pressure on him. You know how Tiny is with you around other men. I know how he is, all right. He's stupid. <laughs> Ain't got the brains of a mud fence. <laughs> oh, <clears throat> I don't mean all that. It's just that Tiny... He's so provincial. All he ever likes to talk about is how much gas he pumped today. The Dallas Cowboys or horses. You could do a lot worse, Bethesda. Listen to a voice of experience. Tiny's got no hold on me. He thinks he does, but he doesn't. Just because we go out to the movies every once in a while, he thinks we're betrothed or something. I've got news for Tiny Templeton. I'm going to college. And from there, who knows? I have no intention of spending the rest of my natural life in Latigo, Texas. Sometimes I wish this town would just curl up and die. Then we'd have to move. You just might get your wish if the Stanford fella doesn't come up with something. And speaking of Mr. Stanford, let me just run through my number. I tried to spice it up some this year. <laughs> Not too spicy, I hope. Oh, nothing vulgar, if that's what you mean. I just decided it was time to put a certain emotional rage to baton twirling. A maturity, if you will. I want to combine the physical, the artistic, and the intellectual into my routine. It is time for baton twirling to come out of the closet. And that's precisely what I intend to do. Here goes. Ladies and gentlemen, the Lions Club of Chandlerville is proud to present Bethesda Pits of Latigo in a twirling odyssey entitled Cradle to Grave. Thank <laughs> you. 
think so. Did you really like it? Honest? Yep, you'll steal the show, no doubt in my mind. Do you think I should show it to Mr. Stanford? Not before dinner. Oh, shut up. <laughs> I'm sure the opportunity will present itself, but I wouldn't be too pushy. You're right. I'll just wait for the right moment. Mama wants you up at the house. What for? Beats me. She told me to just go mind the store. Don't be gone too long, though. I got things to do today. Nothing much important, I'm sure. I'll be the judge of that. Hey, Rob Bob, are you going to Tammy, Tammy Whitaker's swimming party? No way. I got things to do to it. You today. You couldn't drag me there with the practice. I thought you liked Tammy. She's okay. I just don't want to go to some stupid swimming party. Well, it would be rude of you not to show up. You should at least make an appearance. All the other boys are going to be there, aren't they? I guess so. I don't know. Well, if she was polite enough to invite you, you should be polite enough to attend. Ain't that right, Verna? She's right, Rob Bob. You wouldn't want to hurt Tammy now, would you? See? Yeah. So you'll go? Nope. <laughs> Rob Bob, you're going to have to learn I wasn't that... invited. What? I didn't get an invitation. Don't be silly. Everybody got an invitation. It's okay. No big deal. I got better things to do today. Oh, I'm gonna have to have a word with that Tammy Whitaker. Just who does she think she is anyway? Don't say anything to her, to her Bethesda. Promise me you won't say a single thing. Tiny's taking me out to lunch over in Chandlerville today. You want to come with us? My treat. No, no thanks. I got things to do today. Thanks, honey. Okay, I better be going then. Hey, you and Vern should play a game of dominoes. I'll be back before it's over, okay? Right. <sighs> you know, I never did like that Tammy Whitaker. Ever since she got her braces off, she's been acting like she's God's gift to men. <laughs> I know for a fact she pads her bathing suit. <laughs> Don't you say anything, Bethesda. I won't. Promise. Promise. <laughs> Toodaloo. Well, how about that game of dominoes, Rob Bob? <sighs> Women. You mean girls, don't you? There's a big difference. Do I seem strange or weird to you? Don't be silly. There's nothing wrong with you. Then why is it whenever I start to get friendly with a girl, I always scare them off? I just can't figure it out. There has to be something wrong with me. Maybe you're trying too hard. That's just the point. I run them off without even trying. Like Tammy. She's the one to come acting all sweet on me. I had nothing to do with it. She would get, come around asking me to do things with her. Like go to the movies and go swimming and go watch television. Then, about the time I start acting sweet on her, she drops me like a hot rock. Doesn't even invite me to her swimming party. Just like that with all the other girls. Everything happens all well and good until they get to know Rob Bob. Then it's, don't call us, we'll call you. <laughs> I'm starting to think there's something very wrong with my personality. Do you think I might be one of them psychopaths? <laughs> I don't think you have anything to worry about. And if there's one thing you're not, it's a psychopath. You're just going through a tricky time when all them girls are concerned. And you know there's nothing more difficult than dealing with them teenage girls. Heck, they change direction faster than a water bug, and there's nothing no one can do about that. Well, I'm about to give up on the whole mess. Just give it a little time. Things will change. You'll see. Let's play the game of dominoes to take your mind off things. What's that? I don't know. It sounds like a train. Well, the problem with that is it makes the train tracks not another 25 miles away. Think it might be one of them Air Force jets? I'm not sure. It could be. Sounds like it's gonna crash. Ah!
moved at this rate. Are we gonna die out yet? Don't be silly, Shirley. Of course not gonna die. Then why is Ma praying? <laughs> she's not praying. She's muttering. She always mutters when she's disgusted. Where's Albert? He's chasing a lizard. At least I think it was a lizard. Albert! Albert! <laughs> I am never going to forgive you for this, her. I am never going to forgive you. God help us all. Have you seen Albert? He was right behind me a minute ago. Albert? Her, where is he? Where is my son? Where is he? Albert! 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 You want me? Albert, where were you? You had us scared to death. I'm sorry. I want to explore. From now on, you stay on the road with the rest of us, young man. You call this a road? No more exploring. There are snakes out there. Our cup runneth over. Don't worry, Edna. I'm sure a call will come down the road sooner or later. I think the last thing that used this road was a wagon train, her. <laughs> we just stayed on the highway. No, we just stayed on the highway. We live in a snake, snake ranch in the space crater. Right, kids? Yeah, and we wouldn't have gotten these neat cats. I could have gone without seeing a hole in the ground and 20 reptiles. And now look at us stranded. There's no need to make a federal case out of it, Edna. Our car has broken down before. In Poughkeepsie, her. You throw a rock in Poughkeepsie, you hit a gas station. But here, God help us. <laughs> Don't worry, Edna. It's only eight miles to Lattigo. go. Oh, goody, let's jog it. <laughs> Are we going to die out here? Shut up, Shirley. And stop talking that New York accent. We have been their whole life. We've only lived there two months. Yeah, well, that's how Uncle Mike talks, and everyone loves him. <gasps> <laughs> Why don't I have a drink of water? I'm to love our spirits. But only two swallows each. If it's come to that, rationing water, neat. <laughs> yep. All my army trains coming back to me. Army train. You were a clerk typist at Fort Dix, Herb. The only thing that you were ever trained to do was form us into a stinner pool. <sighs> Wish when Mike was here. He'd know what to do. <laughs> He'd do just what I'd do it, Albert! I don't think so, Dad. He would have fixed the car. Oh, my God. Well, what? He's a genius. Would have figured something out. Like they tell me about that jet in for a landing with three of his engines gone. You remember that? I remember. <laughs> I don't think there's anything Uncle Mike can't do. <sighs> he, he can't get us out of this mess. That's one thing he can't do. He didn't get us into this mess. <laughs> it's not glowing anymore. He was a meteor dad? Must have been. I'm just glad it landed on us. It's funny how the car broke down right after that thing flew over. Yeah. Just like in the movies. It was probably a spaceship giving off a negative imaginary field. Everything stops working. Didn't it affect your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> what time is it, Herb? That's funny. Hmm? My watch stopped working. Negative magnetic field. Mm -hmm. Happens every time. <laughs> I just wanted to wipe it, Albert. There's nothing but a physical about that. Do not be afraid. I am Dacron from the Galaxy Polyester. We come in peace. All we want are the Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders and $3,000. Just back off, all right? <laughs> well, we should get the trail. I might get the ladder before dark. Oh, yes, that would be nice. It is also imperative. <laughs> oh, 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 
football name holds Alex. Wait, you played football, Dad? Like Uncle Mike? No. I was on the debate team. <laughs> then how'd you hurt your knee? I fell on the speaker's platform. <laughs> but the doctor called about football me. Let's get going. Can I be scout? Hmm. Only if you stay on the road. Okay. What should I be on the lookout for? Signs of life. And a bathroom. Follow me. My friends aren't gonna believe this. Just think of it as a veteran, Shirley. Now let's head out. I'm to go. Watch out for the snake! After you, dear. I still think we're gonna die out here. Shut up, Shirley! Excitement in the heat now. Well, you know. I'm telling you, I saw them. Joni, where have you been, girl? Didn't you know you had your mama worried, scared? I'm taking her home and putting her to bed. I don't need to go to bed, Mama. They're really coming. They have things coming out of their head. Were they green or anything? They weren't green, but they were wearing uniforms. And they were headed this way. Do y'all think it's an invasion? Just take it easy, Cassandra. Is there some law saying I can't ask a question? We don't need any rumors about aliens from outer space floating around. Did it ever occur 
to you that she might be telling the truth? Just the other day, I was reading in a magazine about this man down Florida way. They stole his TV set, burned up his birds, turned my blood cold. You've been breeding too much hairspray, Cassandra. I didn't have to get this perm off my head, Elvis. I spent a few minutes giving you a piece of my mind. Sit. Jess, do you remember this, Elvis? Five years ago, we had the Greater West Texas Frisbee toss off. And that hippie showed up with the van, with the flames pinned all over the sack. I no sooner saw him than I knew he was up to no good. I told you what I thought, and you said the same thing. You said, Cassandra, you've been breathing too much hairspray. Not two hours later, we didn't have a frisbee to call our own. Had you taken me, the Latigo would have avoided a tragedy, and that hippie wouldn't have had a lifetime supply of frisbees. <laughs> I got nothing more to say. Well, I guess I better go check back into the office. No telling what other rumors might be floating around. <laughs> Thanks for the help, Elvis. Don't mention it. And you get some rest, little lady. You'll feel better after a nap. It won't change what I saw, Sheriff. They're coming. You'll see. Joni girl, you're burning up. I'm taking you home and putting you in bed now and hear any more of this nonsense. You understand? But mama, do you understand? Yes. Bernie, you just take the rest of the day off. Rob, Bob, and I can handle the store. Thank you, Queenie. I appreciate it. <clears throat> I'll run you back to the house. Space creatures. That Johnny's been reading too many inquirers. Well, Cassandra is just as bad. She takes everything she reads to be the gospel. Last week, I was in her shop. She had a carrot sticking in her ear. Said she could lose a pound a day and prevent cancer. <laughs> I wonder where Daddy is. I want to go out there and see what that thing looks like. Rob, Bob, you are not going anywhere near that thing until we're sure it's safe. Might be radioactive or something. Oh, Mom. Sure said it was nothing but a big hole in the ground. <laughs> well, it ain't going anywhere. You'll have plenty of time to see it. Yo, anybody here? In the office, honey. Is the sheriff here? Just left a minute ago. Is, is Joni here? Yeah, the sheriff just found her. Take her home right now. Good. Well, we got another problem on our hands. Garner Fight is missing. Missing? What do you mean? Well, I went out to have a look-see at that there crater. When I was coming back, I see Garner's truck way off the road. Just doing circles. It was just making circles. So I drive down out to it, jumped in and stopped it. And Garner is nowhere to be found. He's gone. That don't make sense. Tell me about it. Drove all around out there looking for him. Finally, I decided I should come back and notify Elvis. He'll be at his office directly. I don't like it. I don't like it one bit. Where's Bethesda? She's up at the house. This is gonna upset the heck out of her. I'm not gonna be able to take her to Chandlerville for lunch. I know she had her heart set on it. Oh, I'm sure she'll understand. <clears throat> Reckon we should be forming a search party soon. Mama, can I go? Oh, I don't think so, Rob Bob. I'm gonna need you around today. You know, what with Mr. Stanford coming and all. But Mama, I'll clean my room and Bethesda's here. She can help mind the store. Plus, they're gonna need all the help they can get. That's right, he would come in handy in those pits. Besides, I keep my eye on him. Well, we'll see what the sheriff says. If he thinks it's all right, then I guess you can go. You don't gotta worry about me, Mom. I may be speaking at a turn, Miss Bates, but you don't plan on leaving Bethesda alone in this house with this uh, stamp of the I didn't plan on it, Tiny, no. I think the situation should be avoided <laughs> at all costs. I said I didn't plan on it, Tiny, but that doesn't mean it won't happen. Bethesda's a wonderful girl that hates to see her mind get twisted by some California slave. I don't think you're giving Bethesda much credit, Tiny. And besides, Mr. Stanford is coming on business. Business? Did I ever tell you about Uncle Foster's girl? I don't recall if you did. Is he the one that lives in California? 
That's correct. Not three blocks from Disneyland. Well, Vespa, she had a job at this German restaurant. She'd poke it to the table. And one day, this guy she's serving says he's a talent scout looking for polka dancers. Vesba fell for it, hook, line, and sinker. She's over at his place showing her her polkas, and he kisses her. Flush her on the mouth! She still ain't got over it. Turns out, he was a bus driver. She can't trust these California types. As far as I'm concerned, they've all got inferior motives. Ulterior motives. Those two. <laughs> Reckon those should be in his office by now. Uh, Rob, you get some canteens ready. I'll be back. I'll have them all ready, hon. I expect you to be civil to Mr. Sanford, honey. As long as he conducts himself as a gentleman. And one more thing. I'd appreciate it if you didn't use the phrase California types around Mr. Sanford. I don't mean no offense by it. It just seems that every car with California plates that comes in my gas station it's full of those California types. You know the type. Hmm. What type is that? Well, for instance, I'll bet this Stanford fella, he's going to have blonde hair and a suntan. He'll have his shirt unbuttoned all like. He'll have a little gold chain necklace around his neck. He won't eat anything fried, and he'll go jogging in the morning. He'll eat about 50 vitamins a day. And every time he leaves the room, he'll say, ciao, instead of, see y'all later. I'll be personal friends with at least, like, 15 movie stars. That's what I mean. Would you care to bet on it? Got a dollar says I'm right. You're on. Right, this way is Mr. Sanford. Boy, pop soup. Soup? Honey, <laughs> I'd like you to meet Mr. Blake Sanford. Oh, a pleasure, Mr. Sanford. Oh, please, call me Blake. <laughs> Blake. And my son, Rob Bob. And Tiny Templeton. The fizz is boyfriend. Strong hands. <laughs> well, Arlen, what took you so long? I was getting worried. Ah, uh, Highway Patrol had the road blocked off for a spell. So then you heard about the meteor then? Oh, uh, you bet. Mr. Sanford. Blake. Seems think it'd be just the thing to bring tourists to lot to go. Oh, super. Hey, I was just talking to Ben about meteors the other day. Ben? Uh, Affleck? <laughs> Ran into him at a health food store. Uh, Arlen? Yeah? Can I can borrow a dollar. <laughs> For? I'll explain later. Gone or fight missing, Daddy. Missing? Missing from where? I'll let Ben fill you in on. I gotta head over to the sheriff's office. <laughs> oh, and one more thing. See y'all later. Ciao. <laughs> I just knew it. What's got in the tiny? Uh, nothing, Arlen. <laughs> Joni says he saw some space creatures. What? What'd you say? All oh, that figures. Joni is always saying things. <laughs> says she saw some antennae poking out of their heads, too. Aliens. Cosmic intervention. A oh, close encounter. Righteous. <laughs> you say that someone's missing? Gone. Gone to fight. His truck was found doing circles not more than a mile near the meteor. But Ghana wasn't in the truck. What in his truck? I don't like the sound of that. I don't like the sound of that one bit. Blake, I hate to leave so soon after we just got here, but me and Garner, we go back a long way. I'm gonna have to go help search for him. Oh, hey, my fight come along? No, don't mind at all. Can't say it's going to be a pleasant, though. Oh, that's why I brought so far, so... <laughs> Rob Bob, I want you to go down to the store and get some canteens, water bags filled. Quinny? You go up to the house, rustle up some grub and a third of coffee, I'm gonna go gas up the Jeep. I'll get them all filled, Daddy. Blake, just to make yourself comfortable, I'll be back directly. Oh, super. How'd it go, Texas? 
A tower. Little was expected and less occurred. Oh. And so people started disappearing. Glad to go to Texas, where worlds collide. Little did the inspecting residents know that their town had just been chosen for a cosmic pit stop. <laughs> Who were they? Where did they come from? Oh, they were our celestial brothers. Oh. They were like us, but unlike anything we'd ever seen. Oh, nobody knew where they came from, but oh, one thing was perfectly clear. They came from somewhere. <laughs> Super. <laughs> from the galaxy polyester. Ah! I am Daycron from the galaxy polyester. I am a teenage android. Fortunately, I have no hormones, so my life is relatively pleasant. <laughs> Greetings, Drano. Likewise, Dacron. Have you observed any life forms yet? One moment. Hmm. Negative, at least. Nothing edible. <laughs> Where are our parent units? They are engaging in verbal combat. Our mother unit is complaining about her feet units. Our father unit didn't bring any oil. <laughs> our father unit is waving. Perhaps this is who he wants. He wants a Subaru that will make it to Poughkeepsie. At least, I think that is what he wants. We shall soon be invading Latigo. They will have what we need. Or else, come. <laughs> I gotta get the sheriff. Gotta notify the president, the Air Force. I gotta get the heck out of here. Oh, Lord, let my duck work do. Where'd you find it, Dad? Just lying at the side of the road. There are footprints leading up to it. Footprints leading away. But it looked like the guy might have been drunk or something, because they weren't heading in a straight direction. Yeah. That is far enough. I have got to sit down. My feet cannot take any more. I am never going to forgive you. No. Garner Fight, Latigo, Texas. Well, I'll just turn this over to the authorities when we get there. If we get there, I think my feet have died. Do you want liquid mother unit? Please stop the robot game. You two have been at it long enough. Hey, look over there, a car. And someone's chasing after it. Hey, hey. I think I can catch him, Dad. No, just stand there, Albert. Go, run. Faster, Albert. Hey, wait a minute. Oh, he's getting. Oh, please, please let him catch whoever it is. And they can't take anymore. He's almost in the car. The person burned like a maniac. He looks like a woman. Oh, good. Women have feelings and sensitivity. She would not leave us out here. <laughs> she's not. She's just I told you, sensitivity. She's throwing rocks at him. What? Doc Albert. Doc. Rocks? Did she hit him? Nah, not yet. Albert's taking evasive action. She's jumped in the car. Look at those tires again. There she goes. This is what I thought it 
dust. Soldier of sensitivity, Edna. Does Albert look okay? He's all right. He's coming back. We are due. Due. Why didn't you stop? Beats me. She's probably a kook. <laughs> Who cares, her? The kook had a car. I would take a ride from the Dalton gig at this point. That's probably who she thought we were. <laughs> Look hysterical. Not so loud, Herb. You're giving me ideas. Don't worry, Edna. It's only four miles to to go. I can carry you that far. Thank you. Eh, if it wasn't for a football me. She was crazy. Are you all right? Yeah. She's out of breath. Did you see her? She, she strongly looks at me. I'm almost up to her. She turned around and started throwing rocks at me. Why would she do a thing like that? It was probably your cat. She just assumed you were insane. <laughs> I've never seen anybody so scared in my entire life. She acted like I was a monster or something. I, I told her we're from Poughkeepsie, and she just screamed. <laughs> well, Albert, you did your best. To start a lot, the first person to run into the lunatic. <sighs> nice job, though. Thanks. Can I have some water? Uh, okay. Not too much. We still have a ways to go. Oh. If we died out yet, do you think they'd bury us in these clothes? Oh my gosh, shut up, Shirley! I am sick and tired with her remarks about clothes! She's right, her. We look like the Osmonds. <laughs> Dehydrated Osmonds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh -huh. Oh, and uh, you won't be complaining till you find out how the picture's turned out. In fact, what do you say we got shot by the four mile marker? Let's chronicle our odyssey. You would not dare. Come on, Edna. I look like a lobster. I feel like death. My ankles are swollen, and I have not got any makeup on. Now, if I hear so much as one shutter clicking, I will summon my last reserve of strength and kick sand in your face. <coughs> That's an attitude you choose to have, and so be it. I will tell you one thing. You will look back on this with fond memories. <laughs> You said the same thing when I was in labor, Herb. It was a lie. <laughs> I'm hungry. We're all hungry, Shirley. It was have to wait. Are you ready to continue, Edna? Do I have a choice, Herb? Uh, to the walk. Or die. Let me think about it. Walk or die? <laughs> Neat. <laughs> okay, fall in. Fall in what? An army trip, Edna. Means line up. Why don't they just say line up? Just fall in, will you? Sorry, I was just asking a question. Can it, Shirley? Lawrence of Poughkeepsie has spoken. Oh, lead the way, great desert fox. Yeah, I plan to do just that. Albert's puppy brother. That won't be necessary. I can hold my own. Thank you. That's my girl. That's the kind of spirit to let our pioneer forefathers cross a vast, dangerous landscape. Courage, tenacity, strength, and stupidity. Now move back. <laughs> and if you hear an occasional obscenity, don't take it personally now. Well, if it's anything that keeps you going, that's fine with me. You know any marching songs, Albert? I learned one in camp. Well, someone's here. It's loud and clear. Oh, I'm allowed to go. The worm's crawling. The worm's crawling. The worm's playing me up on your couch. Never mind, Albert. I'm still hungry. Shut up, Shirley. But I've been to my door. I've been married a long time ago. 
Absolutely delicious. I eat at Mame San all the time. And nothing there compares to what I had tonight. Well, Mama made most of it. All I did was make the stuffing. That was my favorite part. The stuffing. Really? Well, thank you. Hey, uh, why don't you uh, come sit down? You've been busy all day. Well, I don't know. I really gotta go do the dishes. I guess a few minutes wouldn't hurt anything. So you've been awfully busy yourself, what with riding out there looking for Mr. Fott and everything. I know Daddy appreciates you for your concern. The oh, least I could do. Besides, it gave me the chance to get the feel of the country. <coughs> It'll certainly help my companion get Latigo back on its feet. Uh, Latigo has never been on its feet in the first place. It started out as a little watering hole and went down from there. Nevertheless, I think it has some real possibilities. Any talent could produce such a beautiful girl certainly has possibilities in my book. Aw, go on. You ever considered an acting career? Well, I've considered lots of things, but they're just the usual idle fantasies of a small town girl. Nothing much to do here except dream. I don't suppose dreaming amounts to nothing in the long run. Whoa. You shouldn't say that. If dreams didn't amount to much, the world wouldn't amount to much, would it? I guess not. I know all about dreams. That's what my business is all about. That's why I'm here. Mind if I ask you a personal question? Well, not at all. If your firm is so successful, why did you take a rinky-dink job like this one? The, the challenge. The risk. It's like stretching creatively, moving out of the norm and into new horizons. Well, it's got growth and adventure and gambling. <laughs> Besides, it gave me the chance to get out of a Glitterville and see how the real folks live. I can tell you how the real folks live. Born, that's how they live. <sighs> I'd hardly call the possible rival aliens born. Don't tell me you believe all that hogwash. <sighs> I can't afford to discount any possibility. We've had two sides at this point. Don't get me wrong. I've known Cassandra Spoils all my life, and I love her like an aunt. But Cassandra, well, she's, she's a. Goofy? Exactly. <laughs> OK, last year, she got bit by a chihuahua over in Chandlerville. Somehow, she was convinced that it was a werewolf. <laughs> Needless to say, she went prowling every time the moon was full for nearly three months. She'd stand outside my bedroom window and howl like a banshee. Finally, the sheriff had to shoot her with a silver BB. <laughs> that got her off the hook and saved the town. Most people wouldn't believe Cassandra if she told them the world was round. That's how bad she is. And that's why the sheriff didn't pay her no mind. Pay her no mind. The fact is, Blake, there ain't no aliens out there. And if there were, why on earth would they come to Lago, Texas? Oh, that's what I intend to find out. Be serious. I am being serious. 
Whether aliens actually land in Latigo or not isn't the point. The point is that people think they did. A lot of people want to believe that aliens landed in Latigo. If they believe they're in Latigo, they'll come to Latigo. That doesn't seem right. That's the way it is. At least, that's what advertising does. It's like selling an empty balloon. Try tying a string around an empty balloon and sell it. Won't work. First, you've got to fill that balloon with hot air. <laughs> and that's what advertising does. <laughs> it's still a balloon, and it's still the truth. Stretch to the breaking point, but still the truth. <laughs> An object crashed to Earth outside Latigo, Texas today, right? Right. And where did that object come from? Outer space? Exactly. And shortly thereafter, two people claim to see strange creatures. Joni and Cassandra, everybody knows that they're... Did they claim to see aliens or not? Okay, they claim to see aliens. And the local ranch is missing under some gnarly circumstances. His truck, <laughs> found not more than one mile away from the crater. A coincidence? Maybe. And maybe not. Given the existing evidence, has an advertising that I can only come to one conclusion. Latigo, Texas, has been invaded by creatures from another world. But that's not the truth. Okay, prove me wrong. Give me one shred of evidence to discount my claim. It seems to me the burden of proof is on you. I'm not making any claims. Oh, yeah, you are. You're claiming that Latigo hasn't been invaded, or at least not by aliens. <laughs> I'm claiming that it has. I've got two witnesses back me up. What have you got? Listen. What? I don't hear anything. Exactly. Not a thing. Awful quiet invasion, don't you think? <laughs> I hate to tell you this, Blake, but the sky is not falling. Not yet. But the night's still young. You sure have yourself an imagination. I'll grant you that. <laughs> and... <laughs> She could have fooled me. Hello? Yeah, Elvis. I wouldn't worry about it. It was Joni. This stuff like a space monster. Right. What's that about? Sheriff's been getting some calls about aliens in town. <laughs> hey, Elvis, you about ready to start looking again? Yeah, I'll take Tiny with me. He's down in the store getting the spotlights. Right. You can just come on right by here. Right. Bye, Elvis. You all going out to look for Mr. Fight? Don't reckon me with a rest until we find him. Just don't make sense. Oh, hey, my services are available. If you all need an extra set of eyes. Thanks anyways, Blake. What we need now where people know the lay of the land. Besides, I imagine you need to get working on your campaign. I better go get ready. Hey, uh, your dad's a pretty nice guy. Yeah, I think so. A little stubborn, but nice. If it hadn't been for daddy, 
This town would have died years ago. He just keeps holding on, looking for solutions. I guess you're his last chance. Latigo's last chance. Hey, I'll give it my best shot. No offense, Blake, but I hope you fail miserably. Oh, nothing like a little encouragement to fire me up. Where did you grow up? Los Angeles. Lots to do, I suppose. Oh, you name it. Ever get bored? Yeah, but everybody gets bored. It passes. You want to bet? It may pass in Los Angeles, but not here in Latigo. Boredom is our principal industry. It's bad, real bad. The biggest thing that's ever happened here, since the meteor anyway, is a Mormon lady gave birth to twins in a Winnebago. Does that tell you something? The landscape may be boring, but the people sure aren't. Wait till you get to know them. Even crazy people can get born if you're around them all the time. That's why I want to get out. I don't want to end up crazy like the rest of them. Stay here long enough and you get crazy. Hey, I've seen a crowd gather to watch a spider cross the street. <laughs> Spend your whole life waiting for something to break the monotony. I don't want to live like that. I want to do. I want to go. I want to see. Farthest place north I've ever been is Amarillo. Farthest south, Laredo. Farthest west, Odessa. And east, Fort Worth. I haven't even been to Dallas. Well, all that's going to change. I'm going to go away to college, and I don't care if I never come back. You'll miss it. I doubt that. Nothing here to miss. All my family and friends, I'll miss them. But not this town. What about your boyfriend? Boyfriend? You mean Tiny? Isn't he your boyfriend? <laughs> Who told you that? Tiny, I imagine. That figures. <laughs> I got the impression he was serious about the arraignment. That's his problem. I had this nightmare. I'm an old woman in a burlap dress sitting on a bench in front of Tiny's gas station. Me and Tiny are the only two people left in Latigo. I've got a cardboard suitcase packed waiting for the bus to take me anywhere. But the bus never comes. The bus never comes. Yeah. You never told me about that dream, Bethesda. Tell me why you did. Oh, why didn't you knock? For heaven's sake, why didn't you knock? I've never had to knock before. Oh, I was just rambling, Tiny. You know how I am. I didn't mean nothing by it. No harm done. Why do I feel so terrible? I never really expected you to stay, Bethesda. I kind of figured after you went off to college and met all those fraternity boys, it'd just be a matter of time before you and I went our separate directions. There's two things wrong with your dream, Bethesda. First, I never would have had you dressed in any burlap. And second, I would have taken you wherever you wanted to go. You wouldn't have had to wait on any bus. <clears throat> Goodbye, Miss Bethesda. No, Tiny, wait! Oh, no! Think I'm about to have the worst crime that you ever saw. I better get to my room. Oh, he'll get over it. He may, but I won't. Daddy once told me that there was an eleventh commandment. Thou shalt not be cruel. <laughs> Up until today, I violated three, four times. Wait, wait a minute. It was Jody. It Jody? Was... 
Joni, no, Arlen. It had things on its head. Joni was dressed up like a space alien. I told her to get on home. Hmm. Maybe it's time we taught Joni a little lesson. Bethesda, go get me that Halloween mask of yours. The ugly one. <sighs> I'm in no mood for games, Daddy. Just get it, hurry. You do. You have your furniture. I don't think you should scare her, Arlen. Teach her a lesson. Just a minute. Maybe you know where things are home, other unit. Listen to that. Earthlings. Here it is. Good. Hi. But, Daddy, you don't understand. Tiny and I just. Quiet, you know... everybody. stuff their faces full of earthlings. All in all, it's probably your divine guidance set up here. They might have landed in one of 10,000 places. And they might have just turned this here planet into one big supermarket for their perverted appetites. <laughs> yes, they might have just pulled it off, but the heathen have made a fatal mistake. They have invaded the great state of Texas. <laughs> and we know how the things or people that do that. Mm -hmm. They are smitten down. They are thrashed, crushed, and generally abused. Hallelujah. Lord, we ask for your help in the coming conflict. Hurry up, Avis. Give us the strength and guidance to do what must be done, namely, to kick a little ass. Amen. 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 Super. <laughs> Shirley heard. She is out there alone with these maniacs. We've moved down one cot. 
It's as simple as that. Oh, there's really much good for cut. What we need to do is lay low until we can make some sense out of all this. And there's some logical explanation. Oh, there is. There is. <laughs> there's a very logical explanation. You broke our car down in the middle of the twilight zone. <laughs> Wish Uncle Mike was here. You show these creeps a thing or two. We don't push us around. They have guns, Albert! Who what do you suggest we do? Throw lizards at them? I say we jump them. Oh Get a gun. Fight back. You have been watching too much television, Albert. What we need to do is get to a phone. We need to call the highway patrol. Maybe we should give ourselves up. They've obviously mistaken us for someone else. If we just explain the situation... We're we dealing with lunatics, Edna! Lunatics! How on earth do you explain anything to a lunatic? For all we know, it's open tourist season around here. Maybe I need tourists how to get their kicks. Well, we have got to do something. Our little girl is out there alone with God knows what. And I can't take it for her. I'm tired. I'm hungry, I am thirsty, I am dirty, I am scared to death, and, and I want to go home! I want to go back to Poughkeepsie, her! There, there, Edna, here. Just be a brave little soldier. Oh, shut up! <laughs> Sounded like footsteps. Footsteps, quick behind the cans! Smell. I like barbecue sauce. Mm, barbecue sauce. <laughs> <laughs> it is barbecue sauce. Some of the barbecue sauce on the dummy. This thing's pretty flimsy. Oops. Put that back, Albert. <laughs> Smells good enough to eat. Care for a bite, Mom? Works every time, right? I kept telling you. You want to catch something, you got to use the right thing. You got to give them what they want. That's the first rule of fishing. What about Poughkeepsie? Oh, is that what you call it? That's what everybody calls it. Hey, you better watch out. My uncle's an astronaut. Wait! talking about. We're from Poughkeepsie. Our vehicle broke down. Crash to earth is more like it. What are you going to do with this? I'm arresting you in the name of the United States of America. Now I'm going to deposit you personally in Latigo County Jail. Now that's what the charges are. Three that I can think of offhand. Spe crashing a spaceship without a permit. Attempted war and cannibalism. That is insane murder. Look, let's humor her. No whispering! You all gotta say something, you say it out loud. Would we be able to call a lawyer? That's up to the sheriff, I expect. I expect you'll get the same rights as other folk. I don't know the rules on invaders from outer space. Somebody blew our pilot light out, Dad. Let's not get into that out. Miss Spoils. Cassandra Spoils. Miss Spoils. Perhaps it will be best if you took us to your sheriff. 
I am sure one phone call can clear this whole matter. You seem to have us mistaken for someone. Well, no! No mistake about it! Where is the other one? There isn't anybody else. No use lying! There are four of y'all out there in the desert. It was you! I thought I recognized you! Why did you throw rocks at me? No offense intended, Sonny. I just didn't want to end up like poor old darn fight. And I'll warn you right off. A lot of people are real upset about what you did to poor old Garner. Now, I'm broad-minded on the subject. I know it's unfair to judge you by our standards. Still, most disgusting thing I've ever heard of. Now, just keep your hands up. Stop moving. No fast movements. No funny business. We will do anything that you say. Just don't shoot. Not unless I have to. You got any other ray guns on your such? Nothing. What about the antenna? What are they for? Shade? We bought them in New Mexico. We may be gullible, sir, but we're not that gullible. Shade. Now just keep your hands up. No telepathic communications. Remember, I read up on all your types. Now move out. Whatever you say. I'm starving, Dad. You think they'll feed us? I'm sure they will, son. Don't count on it. Disgusting. You should be ashamed of yourself. He has not had a bite since breakfast. I thank you not to refer to my friend Garvin Fight as breakfast. Now move back. <laughs> breakfast indeed. believe the rumors were true. There was a mad scrap of logical explanations. It was a futile gesture. In the end, there was only one logical explanation, one irrefutable truth. Latigo has been invaded by aliens, and they were eating people. Who is it? Who's there? It's me, Arlen. Tiny. Tiny. Seen anything? No, no, nothing yet. You reckon they can turn all in a invisible light? Wouldn't put it past him. Well, it comes down to it, shoot first and ask questions later. Right. Arlen? Yeah? I need to talk to you about Bethesda. Man to man. Can it wait until we put a damper on the whole alien invasion, Tiny? Yeah, I guess so. Good. It just seems to slipping away from me. And the harder I try and hold on, the more she slips away. You ever have that problem with Queenie? I really don't think now is the time or the place to discuss such a matter, Tiny. You're right. This ain't no time to be talking about my personal problems. We've got aliens to catch. Right. We'll talk later. I'd appreciate that. Hey, I've been thinking. Maybe letting my hair grow out some. Maybe get a little gold chain knot. You think that would have been nice on my Little did the people of Latigo know, nor could they expect to know, the implications and the blinding lights streak out of the southern sky and bury itself in the area, West Texas soil. Well, you are just as busy as a beaver. Thought you might like some coffee. Oh, what a gem! You're a gem. What are you writing? I'll just some promos up to farm out the media. I've got ideas coming out of my ears. This is really going to be big. The biggest. Can you imagine the implications? 
Latigo, Texas will be the new in spot on Earth. There's got to be like thousands, millions of people who'd be willing to pay to see the spot where actual aliens visited. Yeah, I'm talking space parks and museums, ex exhibits and posters, t-shirts, alien dolls, and alien burgers. I'm talking primetime TV, movies, and National Geographic specials. This will be the cosmic spiritual trip of the century, and Latigo will be its mecca. And you know what that means? Box. Big box. Mega box. Sounds too good to be true. It is too good to be true. And it's falling right into my lap. Once in a lifetime, Bethesda. Once in a lifetime? If you're lucky. You get a shot at something like this. One in a million shot. It's like walking across the desert, tripping over King Tut's tomb. Only this case, King Tut's tomb tripped over you. Oh, what can I say? I'm lucky. Well, I better let you get back to work now. Oh, right. I want to say a top of this thing. We'll talk later. Were you serious earlier when you asked me if I have ever considered an acting career? Oh, yeah, I was curious. Well, I have. You see, I was in drama all four years of high school. Hey, that's great, does it? Uh, hey, can we talk later? Well, and I'm a twirler, too. Awesome. Well, I just thought you might like to know. I'll let you work now. Twirler, time to dozen. <laughs> I mean, I got nothing against men who blow dry their hair. It just seems a little, well, well, you know. But I've been thinking of giving it a try, just to spruce myself up a little. Honey. Look, look, here's something you gotta understand, okay? Now, you are what you are. Tiny. And if you start acting all phony-like, Bethesda is going to spot it in a New York minute. Now, can we cut this conversation for a spell? It's giving me a headache. Yeah. I'm just so worried about me and Bethesda. I'm acting like a schoolboy. But I'm not going to say another word about it. Arlen, is that you? Angus? Yo. Any luck? No, nothing yet. Reckon we should check in? Sure. Dad, you up there? Here, Papa. Still out there. Caught him? Well, who caught him? Cassandra! Single handed! They got him locked up in the jail! Right. Arlen, you come with me. Right. Tiny and Rob Bob, you stay here. Be careful. Now, Rob Bob, you stay close to Tiny now, you hear? Yes, sir. Let's go have some look. Hot dog! You got some Just think, Tiny. We can be guys to catch the last alien. We'll be famous! Yeah! It's too close, though. It's dangerous out there. I let something happen to you, but Fezzer would never forgive me. Likewise, I'm sure. Hey, Rob Bob. You think it's sissy wear aftershave lotion? I mean, the kind that smells like flowers and such? I uh, guess not. Not if they make it for man. Daddy wears it. <laughs> Super. What? Oh, fire me, will they? Well, if there's one thing Blake Stanford doesn't need, it's a job. Too bad I didn't see that doesn't recognize the talent. Empty the trash, Blake. File this, Blake. Get my car, Blake. Yeah, right, that chance. So, I printed up a few fake cards. Sent out a few fake brochures with my name and the firm. So what? They want to fire me? Yeah, okay, that's fine. Just wait till they find out I made the first coup at the century. They'll be on their knees, begging for me to come back to the rinky dink little agency. Oh, Blake! Blake! They just captured three of the aliens. They're down at the jail. Are you serious? Captured? Yeah, because Sandra did it. Oh, where's my camera? Oh, hey, where's the jail? Well, I've, I've got to meet them. I've got to talk to them. Talk to them? Yeah. How else am I going to sign them to? A long term contract. <laughs> Can you imagine what we just paid for alien endorsement? Boggles the mind. That vitamin bag. 
All those California types look all healthy, you know? Just think of giving it a try. No harm in that. Have you been drinking, Tiny? N no. Why? Then what's wrong with you? You haven't talked this much in your whole life. You're starting to sound like a flake. I'm just exploring options, Rob Bob. Maybe even a change in lifestyle. You've been watching the Phil Donahue show, haven't you? <laughs> or something. You're starting to sound like a sand. Maybe I'm just going through one of those midlife crisis deals. You're 19, Tiny. So what? You gotta get three more years before you can have one of those thingies. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a chip for my age. I love that. Okay, how about you go that way, and I, I go that way. We'll loop back later. No, it's dangerous out there. I, I, I can't let you go out alone. Ah, uh, come on. I'll be within hollering distance. And if I see anything I can't handle, I'll just give you a yell. We'll meet back here. Okay, but be careful. Yeah, you too, Ty. Super karma. <laughs> Let's see, we experience avocado together. Ooh, I like your curves. <laughs> Taste wine and meditate. Tune in some jazz. Ouch! <laughs> I gotta rest. Okay, we'll stop here a minute. Are you okay? You're not gonna pass out, are you? No, I'm tired. I can't hardly walk. My head hurts. You took a pretty nasty bump to the head. You might even have a concussion. Can you remember anything? Do you remember how it happened? Um, I don't know. I can't remember. We need to get you to a doctor. Is there a doctor in this town? I can't remember. I'm confused. If only Daddy were here, he'd know what to do. I'm scared, mister. I don't know what's going on. People are chasing me, and I don't know why. Is everyone in this town crazy or something? I can't remember. I'm, I'm sleepy. Gotta sleep. No, you can't do that. You can't go to sleep. Mister! Great. Now what am I gonna do? If I could just find Mom, Dad, even Albert, I'd even settle for Albert. Mister, you've just got to wake up. We can't stay here long. Mister. Troops. You're under arrest. Mom, Dad, Albert, are they okay? Who's that? I don't know who he is. I found him wandering around out here. He's been hurt. Gunner? Gunner Fun? What have you done to him? I haven't done anything to him. <clears throat> then how did you get his wallet? Wallet? Oh, that was his wallet? Daddy found it laying by the side of the road. Our car broke down. We were walking. Well, at least he's alive. We thought he was dead. We thought y'all killed him. We didn't do anything to anybody, but he's got a big lump on his head. We need to get him to a doctor. He's sleeping now. What are you staring at? You can't blame me for staring. You're the first one I've ever seen. This town must be smaller than I thought. You ain't never seen a girl before. You know what I mean. I didn't get to see the ones that got locked up in the jail. So you're my first. Mighty glad to know y'all make cannibals, though. Gonna can testify to that. Where are you from, anyways? Poughkeepsie. 
How long did it take you to get here? Four days. We were headed for California. Did you say cannibal? It's just a rumor. I wish you'd quit staring at me. I guess I was expecting something out of the movies. You know, green skin, weird eyes, long teeth. <laughs> but hey, you're down my pretty. Pretty? Me? <laughs> yeah, you. Pretty. Anybody called you that before in Poughkeepsie? I guess. Right now, Poughkeepsie seems a million miles away. At least. <laughs> you got a name? Or a number? Or something? I'm Shirley. Shirley Liverman. Heck, we got Shirley's down here too. Ain't that something? Yeah, what's your name? Rob Bob. Rob Bob Pitts. I don't think we got any Rob Bobs in Poughkeepsie. I expect so. Let me be the first to welcome you to Texas. That's what we call this place. It's in the United States. But I'm pretty sure everybody knew that. We had a pretty good idea, yeah. We two have schools, amazing as that may seem. If you're gonna be here for a while, would you mind if I showed you around? Well, I don't know just how long we'll be here. We'll probably only stay until the Subaru is fixed. But if it's okay with Daddy, I'd love to, sure. Really? Great! Now, can you take me to my parents? It's been a long day, and we need to get him some medical attention. Right. You just stick with me. I won't let anything hurt you. And if anyone gives you a hard time, you just tell me your personal friends are Rob Bob Pitts. I'll do that. <laughs> Donna, Donna, wake up. It's me, Rob Bob. Donna, we gotta get you to a dog. Oh, you're not gonna make it. I gotta carry you. You understand, Donna? Yeah, I understand. <laughs> mm, you're strong, Rob Bob. Oh, I can hold my own. <laughs> I reckon you could fly us there. Now without a helicopter. Heck, <laughs> you big kissy folks even got a sense of humor. You ain't that much different from us. Sir, stop! Anybody for a daiquiri? Jogging is legend with me. Naturally, I take Valium, but only after Bergman fell. Sure, I wear surgery over Lynchies. Doesn't everybody? <laughs> Bianca, would you pass me that? See that scar? I got that for serving my country. Shrapnel? No. Letter opener. <laughs> but it's a principle. When was the last time you remembered your mother-in-law's birthday? Can't recall. Every year, a dozen roses and two pounds of chocolate-covered cherries. Like clockwork. Does that tell you something? Does that sound like a cannibal to you? Does that sound like a creature of outer space? <sighs> Why don't we have a little test? Why do you ask some questions that only an earthly would know? Inside stuff. Just see if you can trip me up. Fair enough? Sounds fair. Got one. Shoot. Who won Best All-Around Cowboy at last year's National Finals Rodeo? <laughs> what kind of question is that? How should I know that? Everybody knows that. <laughs> I'm not the least bit interested. 
interested in rodeos. And you claim to be American? <laughs> Ask a little, more, a little bit more general. Come on. Who are the two hosts of Hee Haw? <laughs> <laughs> That's general. That's general. Don't raise your voice at me. One more question. <laughs> please, please, make it reasonable. All right, you got one more chance. Any American should know this one. Who was the man that broke Babe Ruth's home run record? I know that. I know that. Oh, yes, got you, got you on that one. Oh, yes, sir, I do know that one. Well, who was it? Oh, picture in my tongue. Like a picture of Planet's Day. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, break! Break something, break something, break something! Oh, broke the record, broke the record! Oh, oh, oh. I don't think we need to continue this conversation. No, wait! I didn't know it really, I do! You had your chance. I admit, you're pretty convincing. They've obviously got you pretty well trained. I'll come back later, when you're ready to start telling the truth. Mormon! It was fake, Mormon! Frank Foreman's an astronaut. Everybody knows that. Want to find Terry Kate the alien? I don't know. I usually go strictly by the book. Oh, it's okay. I'm really good at dealing with people. All right, but I'm only giving you a few minutes. Oh, soup. The skill you need. Oh, right. Thanks, Sheriff. You won't regret it. Frank Foreman. Who are you? Blake Stanford. My car? And, and you are? Hey, Ken. Hey, Garrett! Hey, Garrett was a famous baseball player. Huh, broke Babe Ruth's record? Oh, I know that. I know it too late. Me and you, we need to talk. And there isn't much time. Once phones start working again, this place will be crawling with reporters. <laughs> Good, because I got a story for that. I bet you do. Oh, kidnapping, false arrest, assault, and human punishment! Huh. I could go on and on! I got this lawyer friend in Albany. He just made a three million dollar settlement for a botched nose job. Oh, wait till he gets a hold of this one. I'm gonna litigate this place to oblivion! Very good. You're really very good. Of course, I expected that. I imagine you'd be very well prepared for this. Prepared for what? Let's not pay claims. I'm here to offer you the chance of a lifetime. The last guy who told me that was that Electric Combs. I bought him, of course, but I literally tore the hair out of my roots. Excuse me for being wary. What's your mission? My mission? Yeah, why are you here? You know, I've given that a lot of thought. I either came to the conclusion of fate or a faulty field pump. That's why I'm here. Are you here as part of an expeditionary force? Are you here to observe? To conquer? Here we go again. Just hear me out. If you are here to conquer, then you're indeed fortunate, because I'm the man who will show you how to conquer without firing a shot. I am a tourist. I'm not interested in conquering anything. Marketing, huh? I'm talking promotion. Your own primetime TV shows. Would you advertise your own product lines? The revenues of which you used to diversify into and feel my vibe. Religion. You found your own church. You preach whatever you want to. You not only get to influence everybody, but it's tax free. <laughs> revenues increase. You buy a satellite and worldwide. The Alien Gospel Hour. <laughs> can you date it? Network stuff too. You produce your own shows that can, be, can appeal to everyone. A little house in Little house in the asteroid. The crazy world of aliens. That's alien. Cooking with the aliens. Charlie's aliens. <laughs> and for the tots, aliens neighborhood. Alien Street from the alien after school movie. How's that sound? Mr. Stanford. Oh, boy. Mr. Stanford, why don't we get something straight? Why don't we be honest with each other? Wouldn't that be nice? Oh. I think that would be super. My name is Herb Liverman. 
I'm from Poughkeepsie, New York. It's only a matter of time you find out I'm telling the truth. I own my insurance company. I live on a house on Elm Street. I mow my lawn and watch football games. I'm not an alien. Not even a Shriner. <laughs> You're not an alien? Cross my heart. But I was counting on you to be an alien. Well, I'm very sorry to disappoint you, Mr. Stanford, but I am what I am. What I am is not an alien. But the antenna, and everything, and the meteor, and the missing man, and the science. We bought these from space caverns. Do you think an alien actually wears something that's made in Taiwan? <laughs> you got a point. I'm just afraid we're victims of circumstance. How sad. Not true. I was hired to tell Pearl about it. The media was a blessing. But the signing of aliens? Oh, even the remote possibility that it might be true could have been. Well, I'm sure you know. I'm sure I do, yes. And if I promoted you as aliens, and it turns out that you're really Herb Lifferman, I'm going to be the laughing stock of the advertising business. Oh, to put it mildly, yes. But, but what? I think I have an idea that can satisfy both of our interests. I only ask that you listen without interruption, and that you keep an open mind about it. And if you do as I ask, you and your family can be on your way by morning, and the town of Latigo will finally be on the map. I'm listening, Mr. Stanford. Oh, very well. Here it is.